Just uh, making some pens here and all. What? How's she going today, guys? Oh, not too bad. Um. As you seen from the last video, we got the AI trader out. We got to treat some calves today, but I was short a panel, so I'm going to make a 30 foot panel here, real quick. Uh, like I say, real quick. I'm welding the sucker rod directly on top of the uh, uh, drill stem. That's generally not what I do, but like I say, I need to do this quick, and it's got all these goddamn scrapers on here and you won't be able to run them through the pipe unless you cut the uh, scrapers off. So that's why I have a joint right there too because I thought, well, whatever. Anyways, back to this subject. Um, I had lots, of, lots and lots of questions actually about welding sucker rod to drill stem or pipe or any sort of steel. Uh, the problem that you run into is that sucker rod is a hardened metal and the pipe is a soft metal, soft steel. So usually what I do is I run a triple pass. Just like that. I run a root pass, one on the bottom, and then a cap. So both sides. And that way... When you're, as you're welding, you, you run your root pass directly in underneath here like this. Then uh, that heats up the sucker rod and it heats up the pipe. So when they're both heated up, your next pass is your penetration pass. So you run one lower, a ledge, then you run one up underneath uh, against the sucker rod. And that's what cuts in to the sucker rod and makes a weld like that. So... Anyway, that's what we're using. We're using, uh, we're running about 21 volts, uh, C25 shield gas, 035 wire, and holy fuck, what happened here? I see. See, there you go. That's what happens. See that? I had that tacked right there, and when I was hitting the scraper back, I, I slit the scraper, then hit it back with the big sledgehammer. And that's what happened. The vibration will break that loose if you don't have a triple pass. Uh, that being said, even if I was welding with a stick, I had guys asking about welding with 7018, 6010s, 6011s. I don't know. Those are your, those are pretty much your your number one your number one uh, farm use welding rod. 7018, I guess you could throw in there. 7014, 7014, 7018, 6010, 6011. Those ones, uh, the 6000 6, series like to cool the puddle quick, so I like them better for uh, welding uphand because it, it cools your puddle as you work your way up. But anyways, no matter what you're doing, you got to do a triple pass. I don't care what you say or what anybody says. You can't get a big enough weld Unless you're maybe using 045 wire and just let it pool up as you as you uh, burn it in there, but I don't know. I I built these with uh, 7018 one eighth rods before. Uh, these are what I use right here. It's upside down, but there you go. It's still upside down. Ha! Ah, uh, 7018s one eighth rods. They're right here, so. I have used these used these in the past. Um, they work pretty good. Uh, I don't know. We got some of these too here, 6011s. They work pretty good. Those are Lincoln Lincoln uh, rods. But anyways, I just wanted to touch base on that because, like I said, I had I had quite a few questions about that. So uh, this panel is actually 30 feet. I dug through all my drill stem layer 
last night, uh, yesterday, I guess it was, two nights ago. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Every day runs into the same. So, And I found uh, a couple of, well, I found a handful of them that were two, two out of the six pipe I brought in were under 30 feet. So this panel is going to be 30 feet. So I got 10, 10 foot spaces between, which is fine. That's all right. Um, so that's what I'm making today. So I got to get this done so we can separate those wild cows and the calves in the uh, squeeze shoot pen and run the heifers because we got to treat the heifers, get some weights on the bulls here pretty soon and uh, to kind of segregate everybody. And if that don't work, then we might just use this and set up the old shoot at the end of it just at least to... Uh, we got to treat a couple eyes here. Looks like they got, I don't know, maybe maybe some dust or some shit in there. So anyway, I'm going to keep going on here. I just wanted, like I said, to tell you about the triple pass. You got to do a triple pass. One root, one ledge, one on the top to fill the gap. It's called a cap fill. So anyway, guys, got to get back at her here. Get her done. Ashley went to pick up some uh, vet meds from Walmart. So see you in a bit. All right, Billy. Okay, so we got her done. I uh, did a little bit of downhand in here just to fill in the rods on the uh, pipe. The outside, I really don't care. But like I said, guys, got a triple pass if you want to put the sucker out on the outside of the pipe. Um, some guys say don't even bother trying this, but I got three panels out there and I haven't broke one yet. I broke... I broke one bar off a five bar panel I made for another guy and he uh, wanted to buy them but we need them for ourselves and then we mounted a gate on it. Anyways, when I came with the grapple, I came like this and the bucket edge hit on here and on here and I squished it and I sheared it off right where I welded it to the, uh, when I went through the pipe. And that's usually how I build them. So that was just uh, operator error there. But I've never had cattle uh, bust these off. I made some goat sheep and goat ones before when I had uh, When we had lots of goats we put the put the bottom pipe pit near right to the ground and um, I spaced them like that far apart and then as I got up higher I ended up spacing them farther apart I guess but this I made them the exact same way as this uh, welded them all on the outside so uh, like I said, I got joints in here. I welded the joints together so they don't end up uh, coming apart. Um, and the only reason why I have joints like that is because, like I said, I made a 30 foot, 30 foot panel. So everything is welded up now. She's good to go. She's done. Um, I started squishing the feet. And the reason why I did that is because it's less plasma cutting, less consumables, um, less smoke in the shop and it's a lot quicker so i cut i usually cut uh one foot like measurement a foot and then i squish squish it this way then i squish the other end the opposite way you know so that so that the uh, bottom goes along the bottom and then the top goes underneath here the same way as this now i had some trouble with Hi, Alfalfa. Um, Ashley went and took the tractor and bunted one, and it was actually saddle cut, and it bust the bust the foot off. But we welded it back on; it's still good to go. But I put uh, 15 inch sucker rods on here now to help hold that foot, and it's on the opposite side of the working side. So basically, you do all your work on this side. So if the cattle want to push, they push against the the pipes. I'm still pretty confident if they pushed on this way that it would probably be fine that way too, but just a little extra support on there. I put uh, a couple of them on, so. Just like that. But anyways, I'm gonna go have a quick bite to eat. It took me about, I don't know, two and a half hours to build this, three hours. Time to cut all the pipe, squish the uprights, like this, squished all them in, 
and uh, brought the sucker out around. Like I said, it would have went a little bit quicker if I didn't have these scrapers, because I had a couple that I had to, uh, well, they lined right up where I welded it to the pipe, so we had to cut them, slide them down, or I cut them right off. These ones here, you can cut off easy, because you just zing down here, but those twirly gig ones are kind of a pain in the ass. Um, so what I'd done was I just cut a uh, strip down here and then I just pounded it off. I, I only had one of them that was lined up and it was down on here on one of these ends, I can't remember. But I just hit it off the end enough so I could get a weld and I just cut it off with the grinder. So there you go. Alrighty guys. Well, we got that sucker out panel, panel done as you've seen. And now I'm on the uh, third windbreak frame for the customer here um, I'm gonna try and get all the pipes cut tonight and then that way I just have to weld uh, this one up and then one more uh, tomorrow so that's the plan anyways um, I got for the four uprights cut I got the feet uh, uprights they're all cut and squished so that's what I do one that way and the other one the opposite way like I was showing you um, I had actually uh, quite a few uh, comments uh, on the pipe press and on uh, Facebook and I had a couple on Instagram here actually in the last couple of weeks of uh, guys trying to make their own pipe press so I'll go over this little thing here um, this everything I bought for the press itself I got from Princess Auto uh, the pump the pump is the uh, one of the biggest pumps they have um, we were gonna go 12 volt but we didn't because then you always had to have a battery but we were my original thought was then i can move it anywhere in the shop and just leave a battery uh like mount it right on here then it's basically a contained unit um i was gonna make this <coughs> a little bit differently when i originally made it then i got in a hurry and i thought you know what i'm just gonna make this squish pipe and fuck it that's good enough <laughs> Uh, but what I was going to do was uh, make it so I can put different dies on it and use it like a, like a normal press. Like I got that little bushing press over here. I think it's a couple ton or something like that. I can't remember what it is, but I just got this little guy here. Uh, 12 ton press. And that's what I use to push in my bushings in and out when I change in the combines or um, shafts off bearings or whatever. But, um, this guy, he's a 220 or a 110 volt. Um, I wired him in 110 and wired him into uh, just a light switch power. But it is a 35,000 PSI pump. Uh, I just got one, one uh, single valve, so it's, you know, two ways and one way the other way one way the other way so what did I use for a cylinder well this is a uh, sure left which I, I also got from uh, Princess Auto it's a four inch cylinder with an eight inch stroke I didn't need anything bigger than that um, I can squish up to three inch pipe in the, in the press um, what I did was I put that little uh, stopper thing so all the pipes get squished the same. So that, I just stick the pipe in. I'll, I'll do one here for you in a minute, but I put that in and that's where the pipe stops so they all get squished on the same side. Uh, originally I never had this little piece in here, um, right here if you can kind of see it. This piece in here, I tacked it in. So that the pipe is actually hitting more into the center of the cylinder. Um, when I first did it, I was having trouble with the ram 
was trying to lift up on the pipe. It was trying to ride up uh, as I was squishing. So I added these pieces on top to, like here's my die that I made. Right here, it's just half inch plate. Uh, and I welded it right to the, right to the cylinder actually. Uh, and then I welded two little plates on the bottom so it can't turn. Uh, and then I used 3 8 plate I believe on the top here just to hold this down. There is a bit of a gap in there and you can see um, it just goes up a little wee bit now so that I don't have to worry about. Uh, what I did change, I was having lots of flex in these plates up here so I put, uh, I put a string of uh, uh, quarter inch flat bar down the sides here to help beef this up a little bit because when I was really giving it a squish it was bending these two um, uh, four by four I believe that's four inch frame here but I got double A I doubled it up one here and I put one on this side um, yeah other than that the remote the hoses and the cylinder I all got from uh, Princess Auto the everything else I made myself so why did you leave this open on the top? I had lots of questions about that too. Well, this I, I double this bench as a welding bench and a plasma cutting bench. So if I gotta cut something out, I can cut it in here, 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 whatever. And a lot of the time, when I bring the shitty pipe up here, the rust falls off. And I'd sooner have it on the ground than up on the table where I'm working. You can see on here there's uh, you can see the dust and rust and shit on here so that's why I did that um, it's still fairly light it's only one and a half inch tubing uh, across here the uprights are all one and a half the legs are one and a half and the frame for the pump is also one and a half so I don't know that's kind of why I did it like that doesn't mean you have to make yours like that but that's what I wanted so that's what I built okay so as you can see um this piece is cut out of the same shit as this so it's good heavy wall tubing um we got it in the pre press see it's nice nice and heavy just so i'm not bullshitting you guys saying that oh that's skinnier pipe no it's not so what i do is i shove so Take the pipe and I stick it in here, up on top of that piece, put it in as far as it goes, make sure it's square on here, and uh, just hit the lever. I'll try and hold this here because I gotta try to hold this up. And there we go. Give her a couple hits. There we go. One side is done. Sorry here, I got a little update for you too. We put a cow. Uh, we put a or I put a cow in the barn here right around supper time. Um, she she was going to look like she may calve tonight. The weather's supposed to turn to shit here. Um, they're talking like uh, rain and snow and all that good stuff. So chances are they'll probably calve tonight. It looks like there's about seven or eight that could pop any day here. Uh, so if the weather's gonna turn to shit, sure as hell um, it will if uh, if we got cows ready to calf so anyways uh update on this thing before i let you go here uh my buddy nick over at south sass farmer on the youtubes if you're not subscribed to him get the hell over there um he ordered me parts from moose men at uh, rpm and moose men so what we got is get off my neck get off fucking cat come on uh, anyways, we got a release bearing, uh, the bearing carrier, which is this thing, the pins are war, 
So I said piss on it, I'm not going to try to reuse it. Uh, we got the new fork and a new clutch plate. So that is that. Ouch, get off me. Frickin' cat. Damn kid. Uh, like I said, for 300 bucks, frickin' dirt down my neck now. For 300 bucks, I'm not going to put it back together to save $300 for that uh, clutch disc. So anyways, we, we got a new one to go in. So... Well, I guess that's that, and uh, hopefully that helped you guys out a bit with uh, welding the sucker rod to drill stem or steel or whatever you're welding it to. Um, I've seen guys pound posts in like this, steel post, use oil field pipe, pound it in, and then weld the uh, sucker rod right to it, and I've seen that before too. Uh, but like I say, whether you're using a arc or a MIG, flux core whatever the case may be triple pass it guys triple pass it get it nice and hot and that way the weld actually uh, melts into it so that and that was the trouble that we were having before we've never had i sorry i shouldn't say that i've never had any break that i have uh welded like that but i have heard guys say we don't want the sucker out welded to the front because it breaks off in the in the different weather but that being said, thanks for watching, and uh, I guess that's it for this video, so stay tuned, and there's lots more to go yet. we got to get back to work on that AI trailer, get the motor back in here, and uh, power shift. we got a split army yet. Uh, I'm going to make a little road trip down to old Nick's there one of these days, and pick up my parts, and... Probably go have a burger at their place or something. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Yeah.